This conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> the time being 4.45 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting of June 2nd, 2022 to order. Before we get started, if you are joining us virtually, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. So I call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on our agenda tonight is to review the um, minutes of 5 19 I only had one um, comment question, and that was um, under finance. Um, Tim, uh, where it says the second paragraph, uh, Tim gave a brief overview of the year to date financials. He noted the PD wages are under budget. However, the overtime is over budget, but overall still in good shape. He did elaborate and say that it was um, the overtime um, is over budget, but overall still in good shape because of the um, wage line and personnel changes. And I think that's important to know in three years or two years from now. When people read this, they're going to say, oh, it's over budget, but it's still good. I think it's, we should elaborate a little bit on there. So that's what he said to us. Works for me. That's the only thing I found. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Hey, hey, one more. Mr. Shannon. Um, on two of three Selectman's report, it says he talked about uh, motor vehicle noises backfiring on Main Street. So I reported that residents have uh, expressed their, to me, uh, about complaints about the noises. And also um, Selectman Ruggles uh, said he had witnessed it and heard it too. Correct. That's a joke, thanks. Okay, then, uh, in light of that, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of Thursday, May 19th, 2022, as corrected. Second. Scanlon. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes of May 19th, 2022, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Please note that Selectman Pyra um, is, is not here for the vote, but he is on his way. Next order of business is uh, opening of the bids for curbside collection, the curbside collection contract for solid wastes. First bid I will open is from Casella Corporation. I 
I pull it off the bid form, correct? Okay. I read, the, I read them for each year, the bid yeah. for each year. Uh, so the bids for Casella Corporation, uh, from Casella Corporation for year one is $170,000. Year two is $178,500. Year three, $187,425. Year four, $196,796.25. Year five, $206,636.06. What was that year five again? Excuse me. No, year, year five was $206,636.06. So um, as we as we discussed or as was outlined or has been outlined that We'll read these, um, and then for our own consumption, um, our administrative assistant will make copies for us, have them in the office. We can pick them up before our next meeting so that we can take those into consideration and then um, make our decision um, at the June 16th meeting. Or at least discuss it. Or at least discuss it, yeah. correct. I won't jump the gun on this. So <laughs> we'll take that one back. Yes, as best I can. <clears throat> so, um, next one that I will open. Yes, this one. Hard. It's not on the problem, but I will tell you what I go ahead and pull it up. The next bit is from Pernard Waits Waste Systems. Bernard Weight Systems <clears throat> bid, year one, $250,000, year two, $260,000, year three, $270,000, year four, $280,000, year five, $290,000. Jenny, I'll put them back in the envelope. Yep. Thank you. Okay. They, don't have to be on the they should be ready by Monday for you to pick up. Okay. Oh, that's mm -hmm. uh, so, Jim's going to take a look to make sure that they're happy to add them. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Scott. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, if you're done with this, I just give you all know, the depth checkers and all. I think she had a quick thing she had to say before we run into Okay, that. super. So, Deb Shepard, pertaining to old home days. I should have you, you wore. Have to I, come I, to the I, I should have wore my sunglasses. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. Come to the microphone. We'll so, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. I should have worn my sunglasses. I didn't realize you were going to be so bright. Let's look at the top. Come on. It's, you know, we're summery now. So, so I, I, I just want on vacation mode. So, uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted to stop in. You all know who I am. I just want to stop in and, and thank you for what you did for our family a couple weeks ago when you let us use the parking lot. Thank you. Um, you know, the police officers there helping. Um, Kevin was there helping. Um, it was just amazing. It was nice to see the community support. Even though you cry, I'm sorry. Um, it was a little emotional for us. It was a tough, tough time, but thank you. You made me, made me proud to be a Tilton resident, to be part of the community. And you showed what community is all about. And Pat, thank you for taking the, the reins on that and pulling together the bus and the, you know, the driver and everything. It, it really meant a lot. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. That's all. Thank you very well. You're welcome. You know yeah. our hearts and prayers always go out to friends yeah, and was you tough. and your family. Yeah. So. So, and Sherry is my sister. Well, just, you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the line, it's like, what? He's like, what are you, a family friend? I'm like, no, no. I'm, I'm the aunt. But anyway, but yeah. thank you. And um, update on Old Home Day. Everything's coming together. We have mm -hmm. um, insurance. I'm picking up the binder tomorrow. Scott's been great with um, Tilton Prep helping us get everything done. And um, it is coming together. When is the next meeting? Um, Monday. Um, we're going to start meeting weekly, I think, now that it's June. Um, this Monday. This coming Monday, yep. Um, I'm picking up the insurance binder tomorrow. It came in a lot cheaper than we thought, which is awesome. Okay. Um, we're putting up some banners pretty soon. We're just, they're getting made right now, but um, applications are rolling in. So it's coming together. Where are you meeting? Um, at, the, at the Pines. 
Yeah. Yeah, they haven't given us a key to the gate at the prep school yet, so we can just go in whenever we want. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I have one. I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm um, just going we'll to go yeah. And then um, the old home day um, citizen of the year thing, we have selected ours. Um, I'm, of course, it's confidential. We keep it a secret until the until the day of. But that's the Monday, the Monday before old home day at the Pines. That's where the ceremony will be. So, okay. Yeah, but anyway. And, and as Deb said, we did have a good walkthrough with the committee to be able yeah. to take a look at the site. And, um, so it was nice. It was good for me. I personally like it better than the pines. So maybe who knows? I mean, we have lots <laughs> the, of space. Um, we have lots of electricity. It's going to be great. And the horse pool is the only thing. That, uh, the horse pool. Old home day event. Oh, for the old home day event. Oh, okay. For the old home day event. It was just I, I, I was able to meet with with Deb even though she was late. Um, so. <laughs> I have to come from Thornton, so you know I was driving 85, but she I made had, it. She had the she had the she had the top down. So well, good for her. Good for her. No. You can't think when you're doing that. No, but it was uh, it, it was actually very good. It was good for them to get on site and um, me to be able to show them where the electricity was and where we've got water access and them to start thinking about how things can be set up and accessibility for folks. So um, we're there. And, uh, we're going to encourage people yeah. to park there yeah. and walk to the parade on Park Street and then just end up come back there because there's yeah. plenty of parking. Yeah. It's going to free up a lot of that. And um, we're going to have the parade go the same route and end in the same place. In front of um, Dipsy Doodle and the fire in mm -hmm. the highway, but yep. then people can just walk up. Mm -hmm. um, everything's going to stay the same except for the location. But it's actually I, I personally like it better, and I think we'll be able to get more donations because people have to come in through the gates like they used to in the olden days. So you can have somebody collecting some donations because I mean you guys know I mean each town gives us three thousand, but the fireworks alone is seventy five hundred this year. Yeah. So we have to raise all the rest. Um, we're in good shape, but it, you know, it it takes a little drain, and we're spending a little more money than normal this year, with you know, advertising and um, the insurance policy and things like that. So, so yeah, let us know also, you know, if you have any needs for volunteers in what areas and stuff. That goes without even saying. We can use all the help we can get. I know you guys had volunteered two um two um, helpers from the highway department. I heard maybe. Yeah. So that would be awesome. Um, but we could use them on the Friday or the Saturday, whichever one would be great. And um, thank you to the PD too for your help with the um, with the um, Caruso. Yes, I appreciate it. No yep, so I'll let you go into non-public. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Thanks Deb. Eric, Eric's here, I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> I've said my piece, I <laughs> Bye, Deb, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye, see you Monday night. No, we know, we know. Okay. You, were, you were good, you were proactive. Kevin. Mr. Duvall. Could you turn the non public side? Thank you. Thank you. Please note that Selectman Pyra has arrived. <clears throat> the time being 4.58, I make a motion to enter into non public session per RSA 91A32A, the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him or her, unless the employee affected one, has a right to a public meeting, and two, requests that the meeting be open, in which case the request shall be granted, and, and also for RSA 91A32B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. Second. Seconded by Selectman Constantino. Constantino, yes. Jessamine, yes. Ruggles, yes. Fire, yes. Scanlon, yes. We're now in the room. This conference will now be recorded. I'd like to make a motion to seal the minutes of the non public session of May 19th, 2022, because disclosure would adversely affect the reputation of a person other than a member of the board. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor of sealing the minutes from the non public session of May 19th, 2022, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> we are now on to uh, Selectman's reports. Selectman Constantino, you are the lead off hitter this evening. Okay, I, I think I just have one item. And uh, 
I thought I was doing so good with a whole list to give to Jeannie for Kevin to do some work up at the senior center, but I was informed today that I left one thing out um, by the executive committee. And so with the unleveling of the kitchen in the senior center, <clears throat> the refrigerator is the residential refrigerator, not the Coca-Cola refrigerator, is unlevel. And um, would you mind asking Kevin if he could see if he could level that for us? That's all I have. Let's see. Yes. Excellent. So uh, I am up next. Um, so I had a, a wonderful conversation with Gail last week, and um, I, so I, I decided I'm going to pose the question to the board about minutes, um, and it came where I had asked the question um, for her, um, would it be able to save her time um, by just doing either hard copy minutes for us for this, or the, the, the ones that are sent by email? Um, and she said that it would be wonderful to do one instead of both. But um, she will um, do whatever we want them to do. So I just wanted to sort of get the board's thoughts on minutes and the distribution of minutes. Um, would we like to keep the electronic ones coming? Do we need to do the hard copy ones if we keep the electronic ones coming? So just the, the feeling of the board on that. I think I'd rather the electronic so that I can read it ahead of time. If we do the paper, we're all going to sit here waiting when we see the paper. Um, and we'll, it's going to spend time at our meetings. I hate that, yeah. I'm with that. Okay. I'd just rather have it electronically. So just do the electronic and then we're able to. All right, I could turn it. I don't know if uh, my colleagues up there, anybody else. That's my opinion, though. Mr. Scanlon? Well, I, I think both because I notice as I look around here, nobody else has a computer or screen open. So if somebody's referring to something and we only have an electronic, they couldn't go back and understand what they're talking about, you know, because it would just mean more. So you say both? Both, yeah. I can read the minutes right here. That's what I used to read them this morning. Mr. Pyro. I can go either way. It's I, electronically I enjoy because I can, because usually we get it at least, at least 24 hours in advance. So wherever I am, I can, read them and not have to come here and wait for me to read them. Um, but at least having a hard copy here, one, at least one copy, just in case there's a reference so you can point it out. But I, I'll go with the majority. Why didn't the selectmen opt in or opt out on their own? So if John wants it? both or Eric wants both. Yay. So just clarification, was it? Because I wasn't part of that conversation. Mm. Was it um, was it so that minutes that you review the minutes so that you're not reading them here at the meeting? That was it. That was that the, is correct. That was the question. Yeah. So that so that have the the ones that are sent in advance so that we can expedite the the right. accepting of them here at this point in time. Right. So. Like for instance, Pat. I mean, if you haven't read the minutes, you've said that you've asked a whole lot. Yeah. But if you, ha if she's read the minutes, she's already gone through and made the notes of where she wants changes. Mm -hmm. So. So so could we strike a maybe a happy medium and maybe have two printed copies here, one for one side of the table, one for the other side of the table, and then just in case we want to see the hard copy ones, Thanks. continue the electronic but, ones. But or, let's yeah. I'm just sorry. I'm trying to figure yeah. out the logistics of this. But if John, if John has an electronic copy and but he's got some changes mm -hmm. and now there's two copies and he's waiting to get you know what i'm saying yeah, if yeah. you get if yeah. you we, get what are we saving get the, so yeah. i'm just trying to understand this so if you get an electronic copy and you read it and you and you're reading it and you say oh this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong then do you print out your electronic copy and bring it with you and know, or do you come here and look at your hard copy and search for where you thought you needed changes? I, I, and Kevin, so maybe, I know if I memory it and I look in there so maybe, and I, when I look at them first, I put little notes on them. So don't 
right. across. So, that, so maybe it's a it's a time saving thing. I mean, like I know when I do, I read all mine. I have my hard copy. I print it out. I read mine. I make the changes on my hard copy. I bring it to my select mm -hmm. meeting so I know exactly what. So I'm not sitting there looking for the changes. So uh, that's the way I. That's the way I do it. But I'm not everybody trying. has access to print as I. My printer. Or the time or whatever. Doing the funky chicken or whatever. So do we so for Selectman Scanlon, we make sure there's a hard copy in his fold in his mm -hmm. in his binder for him. So if I ask anybody, um, Scott, is that what you said on third paragraph? Mm -hmm. Uh would you have to look it up on your phone? I would I would probably yeah, I would I would bring my laptop out in terms of what I was or very honestly. So, probably, and, and I'm thinking about that. what are we actually saving because if you print one copy mm. as opposed to pushing five copies or three copies and figure out whose binder gets one. So how much time are we saving? Uh, yeah. Know. When you're printing five copies, how much time does it take to print five copies? So compared really to ink, the electric, wear and tear. Yeah. I don't it? use our copy for that particular. <coughs> it's just me. Is the savings in being prepared when you've already read your minutes, you know where the corrections are, you come and you just boom, 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 you don't, you don't, you know, you're not, it's not like you're rereading the minutes again, you've already done your mm -hmm. homework. Yeah. Is that yeah. where the savings come from, not from not printing the copies? Yeah, I think so. I think that's actually what it is. So, yeah, if we get them, I mean, um, Gail's pretty good at getting them to us like on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If we get the, the problem I have is when we get like the police report or the uh, the highway report on a on a Wednesday afternoon, and you know sometimes we're so boggled down on a Wednesday night trying to figure out what how to prepare for Thursday, we can't keep up with it at all. So maybe the answer is if you don't, you know, how much time do we need? <laughs> my selectmen's meetings are on Monday, so I get to read them over the weekend, so I have all kinds of time. Yep. Right. But maybe it's we say if if you're able to get the minutes to me to the selectmen by Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening, that gives you a couple of days. If you can't, then they just get moved to the next week. You still get them, but you're not going to be asking. There's not going to be pressure on you. Right. To try to read them in the meeting, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it shouldn't be that difficult because we're we're, we're not meeting that often. That yeah. to have it, you know, Tuesday right. like Tuesday afternoon. And it, yeah, it and would I be good, it, it and then then we can become more prepared. Yeah, yeah I, I think that would be better because then too. we have Tuesday and Wednesday because some some of us have meetings right. to deal with in between too. That sounds like a good. Okay. Is that is that everybody else going to just, she's, she's got to get them to you by Tuesday, Tuesday. afternoon. Yeah. yeah, that'll expedite it. Um, I think the second, second and the last piece that I have is I did have um, a very good phone conversation with Titus about the summer concerts. Um, so it, it went well. I was able to send him some pictures of the amphitheater, and um, he is expecting to be back in New Hampshire this weekend, early next week, and then he and I will connect and he'll be able to come up and see the site um, physically. So um, we're moving forward in terms of um, getting everything set there. Um, and I don't know if Mr. Jessen was going to talk about his visit today. So um, what about bands? Yeah. Did he so, talk about bands? So he's he's reaching out to the bands to let them know where the um, but he's where, the, where the site is. I believe he's, he said he has them almost, I believe, well, the quote was almost all of them all set. So so um, it's good, but um, I will let Mr. Jessamyn talk about his visit today, and I am all set for now. Mr. Jessamyn. Okay. Um, I will tell about my visit. Went and looked at the uh, facility over there, and I don't know if you've been over, but you should take a take a trip and and see it. That's cool. Uh, acoustically designed, nicely laid out. Got a wonderful uh, covered area, plenty of electric right there. Excuse me, I could even store some of my stuff in a little, little shed right around the corner. 
it's a it's a wonderful venue. It really is. Um, and my other part was going to be don't I don't know either what the bands are going to be. Uh, Titus is supposed to be here uh, this weekend, beginning of next, and uh, I'm sure we'll be meeting with him right quick so that we can get this information and start advertising the new location uh the first day the bands and so forth and we love when we get that information we'd love to put it on the town website right right at the top of the page uh, my other thing is that uh, i see that the gate is is up and constructed to go over onto the island looks like a very sturdy secure gate plain plywood and uh, quite frankly i think it is an iso for me uh downtown's looking good we got flowers we got flags we've got community thing happening now all of a sudden we've got these two little pieces of plywood hanging out in the, i don't know whether we what we do uh paint them as a mural, paint them just a certain color, put the fact that the concerts are now being held over at the Hampton Theater and the address on, on there, whatever it is, I think we should do something with it. It's a blank canvas. That's the end of my report. So, suggestion. May I follow up, Mr. Jessen? Absolutely. So I um, I reached out to uh, Eric O'Neill, who is the lead art teacher at Lindisfarne High School, um, a, a close friend of mine, um, and he is going to see if there are any students there who would be willing to do something on that. That so. So to that, you know, what might be nice if we could get Kevin to do it is to make a little curve like a arch, archway, you know, and then they paint it like an arch. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I mean, Eric, Eric quickly brainstormed with me via text message, um, you know, that, that they could even do a, you know, they could even do a mural of, you know, maybe what the island looked like in its glory days, something like that. So, they, I mean, he was already thinking about it. He's a wonderful creative source. So, um, there might be the potential there to have Yay. a couple of our local younger artists come over, maybe, maybe take a crack at it. So, yeah. But I do agree with Mr. Jessman, even if we just paint it white at the outset, just to start. So, and information about the concerts, that's a great idea. Yeah. But even if we had, um, even if you did something like the, what the island, the proposal or, or what it could look like or whatever on the, on the uh, plywood, even if we had banners to where the, Coca-Cola will make you up a banner <coughs> for free, but to where on, on either side of the um, rod eye and have the band of saying concerts move to the tilt school. Um, they have two banners made up. They'll do it for us. Who's and this? Coca Cola on 140. It, 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 it would say yeah, Coca Cola on the banner. They put well. advertising. So it's advertising for that. Because we could probably get that done at State as well. If, uh, this is a complete Check it out. quick quick aside. If anyone, those who are connected with the Tilt Historical Society Facebook page, um, there was a, a very old set of pictures donated recently, and um, John Cirillo posted today a very, very old picture of the island with the wooden bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So, with which the, was, the which was, eagle yeah, on which it. was fascinating. Oh. Yeah, the wooden bridge before this bridge was yeah. installed. So it that, goes back. This is actually the third bridge. Yeah. Yeah, so it was it was very very cool. Yes. So, yeah. But it's, if you um, it doesn't matter. I mean, but we should probably have a banner or something that says yeah, you know the concert has been moved over. So with Joe's face on it. It's advertising. <laughs> advertising. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't I can't remember whether the senior center. I think they're white, but I keep, I could be wrong. Parts. Did they have? The banners that they made, do they have Coca Cola? Yeah, everything they do. It's uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't remember. recall, and I stapled those things on so, so many times. I can't recall. Go back to um, you were talking about 
you know, having the area and the amphitheater up there. Are bathrooms available up there? They are. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. Uh, handicapped and regular. There's a handicapped uh, access to the facility. Um, and it's, it's great. It really is a nice place. So by all means, go up and take a look. Yeah, please. Anyone at, at, at any point. Can just, we just, just go up and walk around? Yeah, I mean, if There's you want a, me, an asphalt want me to pathway me, that goes right up there from the bottom. And of if the you want me to, I mean, to join you and just take you there yeah. and show you the stuff, that's just yeah. messed me because. Oh, the total was nice. Yeah. Well, you got a free. Lunch and he treated too. me to lunch. And I want to <laughs> thank him for that. <laughs> Super. All right, Mr. Jessman, you're all set. I'm all set. Mr. Pyro. Um, I wanted to thank Jeannie and her Magic Elves for making downtown look really nice on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I went and I did take pictures, which I have not shared with you yet, and I apologize mm -hmm. for that. But I took, uh, I got pictures of Town Hall, mm -hmm. um, looking through um, the the flags, oh. and then um, I I spent like two hours out there Sunday morning. Yes. I did not get run over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did stand on the road a few times. Um, I also took some uh, the picture that you have, but I also I took video. I flew my drone down the railing with all the flower boxes. Oh yeah. So it, it's it's cool, and I took some other still pictures. So I, I had some fun. So thanks for that. Um, but I I think it looks great, and uh, I actually noticed people kind of slowing down and looking at things. So it was kind of cool. Um, I was gonna do it on Saturday, but I it was too crappy and too humid for me. Um, I just have a question about the detail fund, and I don't know if I can ask that in public, but the number that I saw on the payroll report, is that correct? Because if the number is like that low, we're not, we're never going to be able to buy a cruiser. Um, that, that is correct. <clears throat> and uh, uh, it just depends on the activity. Because it seems like it's uh, prime construction season and we're you can't, even fill, you can't even fill Tahoe for the amount that we put in. Well, I mean, part of that is we're low on staffing. Yeah, well, that's so, what I didn't yeah. know. So. And, and also, uh, each of those was, uh, I think, uh, or both of the details that were done were, uh, were at a discount because they were for town or school events. Good. And then um, by back in May, I talked about a newsletter and because my day went to hell in a handbag today, it's not with me, but it will be at the next meeting. I had printed out a copy for everyone to see of what my vision is. Great. So, I am all set. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Scanlon. No, um, we've, you know, like I was saying, uh, Eric said, center looks great. You know, I've seen the flowers and everything out there. And actually, see them grow and start spilling over like yeah. they do and it's pretty exciting it's one of the things that it, it's doing it's creating momentum and that's the key thing is that people are starting to uh talk about and realize you know hey it's pretty cool everybody's doing things you know start thinking what can they do to help out you know and i think um you know can provide some things to well, maybe even if it's you know picking up the trash mm -hmm. or something like that which I'm going to segue into that um, this Saturday uh, is the trail cleanup. Um, in fact, it's the bags. I should thank him. So they have the bags for them. Um, I don't know if you've seen them, but a lot of other towns are doing that, picking up trash. And you see those blue bags on the yep. sides mm -hmm. of the state roads. And in the past, the state picks them up. The only thing we'll have to do is figure out for the trail, should they leave them out um, by the state road or? You know, or should, state road. or should we try and get somebody with a truck to drop them down to public works after that cleanup's done? Um, but, yeah, and so we can figure out, and I can, uh, I'm going to be down there Saturday at the, um, so it's going to start at the um, hotel down there, the Super 8, at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we can bring some clippers or, or and just show up with some water for the other people. So that would be great. The entering Tilton sign, um, it's all been pruned and cut back with the dead branches and, you know, it's getting a little grubby there. 
and uh, mold around, so that looks nice. So, no, it's did that, didn't you? somebody did it. <laughs> it just got done. Uh -huh. and you you your yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who told the police not to pick you up? Yeah, not to pick me up. Yeah, there's bushes crawling around, and some trash got picked up, and then. Um, the uh, weekend before did the the statues and um it's it's great now because they have a real heavy coat of wax on them which is a great deterrent against vandalism because if it does get spray paints and it's easier to clear off um and uh yeah they just they, they really shine and uh, you know Really appreciate having that light that, that's on there now, and uh, it's it's kind of like a neat experience getting up there. The details of those statues were very very fortunate to have those. Are they generally, would you say, in great shape? Yes, I mean they have a little bit age, but not any type of um, you know they have a little bit of sun burning, you know, from the finish getting a little bit burnt, but there's <laughs> nothing uh, from. Them. Yeah, they're actually in really good shape, I'd say. So that looks nice. A couple of residents walk by. I was going to ask how they could get involved. So, <laughs> so that's great. And the house behind the soldiers' monument's been painted. Oh, oh, I, I saw that. They've done a lot of work there. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's they very good. 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 That house. Uh, I don't know if. Um, between there in those U's, the upright U's that are now upright to the like 25 to 30 feet. Um, inside there, there's a plaque and a monument that's um, like completely overgrown and around it. It'd be nice to kind of see if we can make that a little bit more visible and, and do that. But that's it. Um, Great to have warm weather back. How soon you forget <laughs> the perils of winter. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. I would quickly be remiss if I did not thank um, Helen Hanks, Catherine Dawson for working on the flower beds out in front this weekend. I drove by them a couple of times and um, they're doing their yeoman work there. And of course, um, selecting Scanlon for his work in preserving um, both of those statues. Um, I was able to work with him last year. Um, and it's just it, it's um, it's it's great work in terms of those uh, those wonderful statues that we have. Um, and so thank you to all three of those folks. Mr. Jessman, did you have something? Uh, yeah, um, I was going to roll in on something that uh, Deb Shepherd brought up. Um, on very short notice, um, you stepped into the gap path and really hmm. pulled off a magic trick. Uh, and I personally appreciated all the work you did. Just stepped right up and did it. And it went real smooth, and that could have been such a thing. But uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Good. Town administrator's report. So, um, one thing that I thought you would discuss in the selectman's report was the riverfront park. Oh, yeah. well, and I, brought, I knew you were going to get to the um, report. I brought, pictures. I brought the pictures. I don't want to look at them again. So, um, <laughs> just put a piece of candy print it off on your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, you know, there continues to be vandalism over there. And I, I, I personally I don't understand it. But it seems to be happening at night. And so, you know, I wonder if you should consider shutting those bathrooms down after five o'clock in the evening because it's see it's we have cameras on the bathrooms but you can't see anything because you go, somebody goes in there and the door shut so we don't know what's happening um you know how, how do you want to address this because it you, you've got the cleaning people who you've seen their email that They've never seen anything like this before, so how do we, we've got to do something about it. And, and it's really, it's like, you know, it's like that broken window theory 
you know, the, and graffiti and anything else. Everything else is going nice around this community, and that is happening. And that's got to stop. Got to stop. I mean, that's just. Can we do that without? Do can we do that safely? Closing it to the public, even though we took federal monies. Well, I. I would. Oh, I'll certainly check on that. I would think at five o'clock at night would be okay, but I'll check. Mr. Scanlon, we had a timer on those, and there were times that they would be locked, locked the clock at a certain hour. Um, the only problem we had is sometimes people were going and uh, propping it open a little bit, but that did alleviate this when we had these things happening before. So, you know, and I noticed we have a couple things going on here. Obviously, it looks like it massively overflowed and, and you know was it animals. oil was it the oil well they sprayed oil on the outside of the building but on oh. the inside they ripped off the and you know yeah ripped things off the and, walls. and one of the things you know I, I noticed that okay there's no toilet paper there so i'm wondering if you know if somebody clogged the toilet mm -hmm. too with paper towels and and all that but there's no reason to have it open late at night um, we don't have to. We never did. And uh, I'll check. Yeah, and uh, get it cleaned up, and you know, make sure maybe put two things of uh, toilet paper there because if somebody goes a good size one, puts toilet uh, paper towels in there, flushes it, now it's backed up. You know, flows. Well, then somebody else starts doing it because it's Scott and I were there. brainstorming that very thing. Take the paper towels out and mm -hmm. install. Yeah, well, hand dryers. Yeah, oh. and that's that sort of part of the mess. You know, yeah. and the cost of the paper towels. Yeah, it takes care of a little and bit it, of a mess, and um, as we're far as substitute an electric. Yeah, right? it's you know, it, it's let's put it this way: it's probably honestly in the long run, it would be less maintenance because if if it breaks down, someone's got to go over in there and fix it. But now that you don't have to restock the paper towels and you don't have to do all that stuff as well, and it. It cuts the paper towel budget. Make it a bidet. So, <laughs> so yeah, no, they, they could. could I can see bad things happening. The lady, no, uh, for drying hands. Airports have yeah. no. Are you, sure, are you sure you can't <laughs> leave a bidet? Again? So, um, but yeah, I think that's okay. you know, and see what's yeah. going on with the timer. Right? I don't know. We could come up with the time that we would turn them off ten o'clock or eight no, o'clock at that's dusk. What's happening or, now. I think close at five. Oh, I say eight. yes to five o'clock. I would say five o'clock. Okay. So the other thing is, do we want to go and um, put one porta potty down on the pad by Cumbies? I mean, they come in, they clean it once a week, and they do that. They won't have all the band things, but it, it provides people that are driving through that have to go to the bathroom. Where am I going to go? I'm not going to go down. You know, people will say, I've been there at Cumbies. So we, you have to use the bathroom. They said, no, you can't. Well, there's one down at, you know, the uh, park in the center of town. Or usually they say- They say the that? Street. Yeah. All the stores do. Yeah, it, it won't be anymore. I, well, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're not going to be paying for toilets at the Tilton School. If we put one out there, trucks, I see trucks using it. I always see, I think you've all driven, driven by and seen and I've never seen those a real bad mess except for after a concert and when they get filled up. They, they're generally speaking filled up at the beginning of the concert, unfortunately. Hmm. I, but that, I go there first thing and, and then you tell But me. that's also previous to, so we do have a need for public restrooms and those that's are ones true. you can't vandalize. So is it our responsibility to provide a public restroom? Well, it could be argued that it is. Well, I, I will tell tell you just along that line. When I met with the gentleman from the state, of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, it was his suggestion. We I saw in my report we've got to do a boundary survey where they, where that pad is. They were he was suggesting that maybe um, we put a facility in that LCFW would pay for it, a permanent. You know. Hmm. So anyway, 
then we have the problems down there that we have up there. But I think I, I think if we look at hand dryers to eliminate yeah. that issue, yeah. and then time uh, at five yeah. o'clock. And but I, I I know this is not the the I know this is not the exact answer, but like when you go to Franklin Falls, which is a federally owned thing, their their you know their um, restrooms close at a certain time. So um, I believe it's when the Rangers leave at like four o'clock, those restrooms are locked. So I would think that we were are within our bounds and rights to close it when we, we see fit. Well, I'll, I'll check just to make sure, okay. and then I'll look at hand dryers. Yeah. Anybody? Oh, I was good. Yeah, I'm all set for that. I was good the first time around on my computer. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so my report I received a call before I get into my report I received a call from a resident uh, who expressed some concern about a speed bump on prospect excuse me Cedar Street heading up to Winter Street people are driving around a speed bump onto a resident's lawn in order mm -hmm. to avoid the speed bump and ruining as a consequence of ruining the resident's lawn um and i did talk with kevin about that today and he said he was aware of speed bump issue um and he has ordered additional speed bump signs to actually the last week and believes that strategically placing the signs will keep vehicles on the pavement in those areas they're supposed to arrive next week and install them as soon as possible. Um, the other issue. I just saw somebody do exactly that for the first time the other day. The other issue the resident brought up was she said uh, driving a prospect all the way to the top of the hill, you turn to the left, right around the first speed bump. On the right hand side, there's some dead bushes that impair visibility. And Kevin said that those are going to be trimmed back this next week coming up. So as usual, he's right on top of it, Kevin. Um, so for my report under the action item, you've already signed the training agreement. Um, the second item has to do with the prosecut prosecutorial services agreement. The board did talk about this at one point. Um, few months ago and Tim and I were talking about the other day and I just want to follow up and see if you would like us to talk with Samberton about uh, renegotiating that contract. The renewal is July 1 per the current contract and if you do want us to, do you want uh, Tim and I to do it, Tim to do it, Jesse to do it, thoughts? I say yes. Yes to renegotiate. Okay. Yes to neg negotiate. Yeah. And yes to whoever wants to do it. Okay. So is everyone else okay with that? Mm -hmm. Does, oh. Mr. Pyro. Is um is he spending too much time in Samberton? Not enough time? No. Is he is it it's not burdening him, I guess, is what no, I mean he, it's just I, I think they were very happy <laughs> to get Jesse back. Definitely. No, it's not. It's not a matter of a burden on him. It's just that the contract's five years old, yep. and do we want to see about different expenses? Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, I will do that. Uh, previous meeting of board, there was a discussion about excessive. John mentioned it. Um, noise vehicles on Route Three Main Street. And I did talk to um, PD about that, and they said that. Problem is, is they don't have equipment to measure the noise decibel. So I got a sound level meter and calibration kit that costs $517. And that would be able to give the tool the police department needs to measure the sound, whether it's for this, I'm guessing, or fireworks or whatever, but be able to do enforcement. So on the yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, yes, but there's another part of that is that it's not the noise that comes from the exhaust. It, it's the deliberately causing their cars to backfire that does it. Now, if they go up, they pull somebody over, and then 
typically like with motorcycles and they do stuff like that. They say, okay, put the meter on at a certain distance away. And they say, okay, so rev your engine to 2,500 RPM and they measure it. But what these people are doing, the violation of the ordinance is caught deliberately causing their cars to backfire. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the ordinance, not the amount of noise, but just that mm -hmm. thing. But this would help with other yeah. things. I also noticed that they've been racing up and down there um, between 8.30 and 11. At so, night? At night, yeah. The same cars and like two or three of them will get together and race up the road. It's pretty fast and loud. Sometimes bicyclers learn how to drive cars. The fireworks are already started. <laughs> Okay, so is that a, is that a yes from the board? I had a, Mr. Parra had a question. So is that for one device? Mm -hmm. So that would be in one cruiser that's on patrol? Yeah. So if they're behind someone driving down Main Street and they don't have that device in their car, they well, have to call for that car to come. Well, house, you'd have a, right. But if we have multiple cars out. Well, they just uh, make sure when they get in their car that whoever's doing Main Street. Mm -hmm. Or call the other vehicle. I, I just was. I think I would, I would argue that we would start with one and see how it goes at first. And if um, the if the PD advises us that maybe it would be good to have a second, then we come back and revisit at that point in time. Yeah. I think, I think there's I think, only a few people that are. Yeah, having the issue when one is working. So yeah, I think I think well, I think starting with one and seeing how it goes, and then being able to have a or, or Sergeant Salmon or whoever report back to us like, okay, this is right. it, it's been a useful tool. That's great. If not, then I don't think we need to go. I don't want to put this. Well, Pat, yes. Pat, was, Pat was complaining about my fire. I say yes to that. Yeah. <laughs> So I think yes, it, it is a. I believe it's a yes oh, across yeah. the board, and a very enthusiastic yes from selectmen. That's a first we have. The instant I heard the first one go on Sunday, on the morning. Kevin Brown. That's an order. Yeah. Like it was yeah. 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 I've seen them on Steve. That's what his town ordinance on the one. Both the Yeah. Oh. No air brakes. Mm -hmm. um, Jake brake, yeah. The engine brakes. No well, engine let's brake. start with the. Um, no giant. hip brakes. The buses won't be able to get out. He said the engine brake would be correct. So. Let's, let's, start, <laughs> let's start with one, one of these units. And um, yep. John had suggested the speed trailer to. to Put that out there, so I'll talk okay. to PD. Next item: um, Invest New Hampshire Housing Incentive Fund. If you've read or heard about this, and they gave you a copy in your binder, uh, they're talking about providing 100 million. They've are they're trying to they're working out the details of it now, but it's to expand uh, workforce housing in communities. And what little I know about it so far. Um, is that uh, each community can you work with a developer if, if that's what you want to do, if, if this is something you want to do. Um, but you have the ability to get up to $10,000 per unit coming back to the community so that you could have the potential of getting the town have the potential of getting $500,000 if they get this project because mm -hmm. you up to 50 units. Yep. And so I did initially just to see if there's an interest. I did talk to a developer in who's done development in this community to see if that's something that he would be interested in doing on workforce housing if this is a road that the <coughs> board wanted to go down. He's very interested. He's actually doing it in a couple other communities. So it may it may even be a capacity issue for him that he could do it. But uh, just I just wanted to see what other people were doing and if it was something that was of interest to the board. Mr. Jackson. What exactly is workforce housing? So you've got to have a job in order to live there. Yeah. 
Yes, it's workforce housing is defined as we did in Merida back when I was the main street director. We worked with, I want to say CDFA, and we did workforce housing, and that's for, it's meant for people like nurses, um, police officers, teachers. It's that, um, that's what you're talking about, not million dollar homes, but homes that are affordable to uh, those careers. So, so, I mean, we're at the very start of it <coughs> in terms of just, I need to go find out more. There's going to be a workshop next week, so. I'm all for I just didn't want to go down that road if, if, if you have no interest in it. I don't want to, don't need to go to another meeting. There's just no interest. Uh, at this point, I'm still a yes. Mr. Pyro. Yeah, yeah, ten thousand per unit of one-time payment. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> I, I'm interested to learn more to see if it fits into. Yeah, and it may, not, it may not be right for you. I know it's a hot, it's a hot topic, but it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So is everybody okay with me looking into that a little more? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, next item was the a contract with Hunter Research for consulting services relative to the um, Tilden Island Bridge. These, this is the organization that did the assessment on the bridge, and um, they would help in um, <clears throat> finding the right team of engineers uh, and other folks to work on the project. So, didn't know if anyone had any, and 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 uh, in talking with the uh, folks from the state, this is a cost that would be covered. And actually, while we might not get the grant until October 2023, they, there's a look back period. So, if work was started and expenses were incurred, that they it doesn't start when you get the grant. There's a look back period. So. I, but I think we've already signed it. So, if no one has any questions, um, the only thing is, is I, I completely agree. Hunter Research, you know, I check their resume and everything. But how does this work into our asking for uh, quotes on it? You know, when other people bid it, or you know, to research our. Yeah. You know, it would. I mean, th this is. What you're going to find, and that's and that's something I did talk to the guy at the state, and it's a very a lot of moving parts, a lot of complications to it. Um, it if they're required to get three bids, what you're going to find, like on this bridge, there aren't people who do this kind of work. So I can go out and look for a bid, but there are people who just don't. You know what I'm saying? They just don't do this kind of work. So in this situation here with him, I wouldn't have gone out to anyone else because he worked with us on this and it's an hourly contract. It's not a lump sum. So, you know, I, we would be watching what he's doing, but this is his expertise. So like a part of the works? He would almost be like that. Yeah, absolutely. Much more. Because when I started, no. It's a, somebody to oversee it and I'm interested. Right. Because when I started looking at this, um, moving the bridge, dismantling the bridge, uh, there's just so much that goes into it and trying to do all that with everything else uh, and, and not having the expertise. I just, I, I'm not the expert on this. So. Okay. You, no. you mean one of a kind wrought iron bridges isn't in your no, no, as no. far as <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, when I read the report, I believe they had said that I think there are two two places in New England that do this kind of work in terms of the restoration stuff. So, um, but I think they also specialized in certain parts of it. If my mind does, has drifted, so um, sure, it's a unique project. Definitely is. So. If you don't have any questions on that, the next item on my list is follow from the town hall assessment. I gave you all copies of just the section of the recommendations in the five phases of things that they're, phase one being the first, 
most important. Um, certainly, if you want to see a copy of the whole town assessment, I, I thought I sent that before, but if you want to see it again, I can make it available. But I, for purposes of this discussion, um, I wanted to talk about the phase one, which is the hazard mitigation. Um, according to the report, this should be taken up, undertaken immediately to protect the health and welfare of the building users and arrest any ongoing damage, um, which and treat it will significantly add to the overall final cost of repairs. And in this situation, John, I'm more than happy to go out and get three bits because this is, for the mm -hmm. most part, the types of things in the first phase are not specialty things like the mason work. That's a different animal. But, you know, they're recommending a new metal flue for the gas fired boiler from the mechanical room to go to the top of the chimney. Well, I'd get close on that, see what it costs. We're talking about installing magnetic fold opens uh, that will automatically close, you know, fire rated doors. Well, I'll, I talked to the fire department first before I did anything there. Uh, have a roofer look at the seams. You know, we had a lady three years ago up there. Well, actually, it was from the rain, but um, I don't know when the last time anyone's inspected that. They were up there when they did the town hall assessment and said, you should have somebody look at this and see if. This needs to be addressed. Um, the uh, new exterior light at the school street exit doors from the north stairway, just a safety issue. Um, you know, well, the green doors down here. And then the, the probably the bigger thing is this mechanical dehumidification in the basement, which again, I get folks on all that. And that's just the first phase. So my question to you is, um, are you okay with my moving forward and starting to look at these things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have a budget for that. So use your budget wisely. <laughs> Mr. Scanlon. So I have a big concern that I brought up a couple times. The ceiling above Gail's office is collapsing. The plaster is falling down there. It's dangling along with the wiring. The strapping and the metal ceiling that uh, let's say source off a please hanging over our employees' heads. And this company failed to notice that in the report. So I'm I'm concerned I, about this first if you said, brought it up to you and you said that wasn't the scope of fair stuff. I never look up. I've never noticed it. Yeah. So, and remember I said that I think we missed some points. Oh, guys, above the ceiling. Yeah. The ceiling. Above the but ceiling. at any rate, that's, that's a very serious thing. Well, one the the, yeah. yeah, well, one of the things that they did say was in their report was that those ceiling tiles needed to be removed, that you were seeing because you were seeing staining <clears throat> on the ceiling tiles, they believed because they were covering up the arch windows, which was causing um, condensation. Right. So. But, so I think we need to have them take a look, come back in, take a look above the ceiling tiles and see what's going on. Because if they're doing an assessment of the building, there's, they should have looked and see what's you know above the ceiling. Um, and that's that's a big uh, safety hazard. Oh, particularly if somebody works in that room. Yeah. It's above your office, Jamie. Right? Exactly. I've never noticed. Well, you wouldn't notice it because it's above the the drop ceiling. It's so between this floor. So he would notice that. I noticed. I oh, knew it was. you're inside. And I would notice it because yeah, I was up there the one time too. You it, know, with, it with the cables. Yeah. 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 And that and that really right. was. And, and so, right. And so so that what really was not in their scope. They mm -hmm. were looking inside. They were. Well, you just pop a tile and go like that. Yeah. But that's uh, these are things that we should be looking at I, so if I it's not in their areas. scope of work i think what john is saying if it really was not in their scope of work knowing that now oh, yeah, no, should have, we have them take a look well, i don't know particularly that. at that I'm not, area yeah i'm not sure that we would need to hire them to do that maybe it's somebody else we have to look i think at just it. a contract john's already right. been up there right. kevin because knows how to get I've been up, up there too yeah and Right, Joe, that's a good idea. Maybe and, you know, would have seen the other thing the carbon monoxide that come from the boiler. That's important. That's a you know, start with 
get that and take a look at the ceiling that's you know safety issues the rest of them work into okay so do i have agreement to yeah. yes yes all right um the the next item is the personnel policies and employee manual with revisions. So okay. I'm ready for that. Yeah. I'm ready for that. So this was when I came on board, you know, it's almost been four years. Um, does it seem that long, Tim? <laughs> How many years you've been here? You sure you want to ask Tim? Almost four. So. <laughs> um, Almost four years. This was, yeah. So this was a project that had started with my predecessor. So what you have are changes that were, you know, worked on uh, many years ago, suggested by prior boards or people who are perhaps still on this board, uh, where there are notes where Gail could find notes of reference there there where they're not couldn't find anything so really I wanted to have the board I don't expect um, to go through this line by line tonight I thought you could unless that's what you want to do um, I thought you could take it and look at it um, I had there were some you already sent that material to us in. I did. I was going to say, I think I read it this morning. Got red and blue. Yeah. So, does anyone have any questions? Uh, well, now that you've asked. Okay. Chairman hasn't read it. He's starting to read it now. No, I was looking at it before. Oh. Now we're back to the web. So, yeah. Is Selectman so Constantino, you have like this, like, what's that? Some of the stuff that was in there before. But, yeah. Wait a minute. So I have this to say about that. There's a couple areas when I first, I, I did talk to Jeannie about this, and then um, she shed some light on it that it was really predecessor that started a lot of this so it made sense to me what what was taking place here because it was like well didn't we already do this on most of this but I will say this about that we have um, we have in the last year made a val valid effort to make sure that we um, retain, sustain, be consistent with um, the police department. And right now we're going through negotiations for wages so that we can retain um, police departments because it's such a, a necessity. We need to do we need to make sure, and I'm not sure if I'm going to articulate this correctly or not, we need to make sure that our non-CBA employees either have the same benefit or better than the CBA employees. I've maintained this over uh, a very long period of time and it's been a passion of mine that we do not penalize people we have a benefit it's called paid time off that is called paid time off it's earned time well police have a benefit if they work a holiday or if they get paid time off time and a half um, and they happen to take a day off or a couple hours for a doctor's appointment somewhere down the road that week, they don't get penalized and dig into that time and a half that happened on a Monday or Tuesday. But Highway does. 
that's exactly what happens. They lose that time because they don't work a 40 hour, but they do work a 40 hour because they get paid time off. They, they actually earn that benefit. And what we're saying to them is because you, let's say you're Monday through Friday and you're working a 40 hour week and uh, I've scheduled a doctor's appointment for a couple hours on a Thursday and I got called out for a snowstorm on for nine hours on Monday evening. Um, well, I still have to go to the doctors on, on Friday, but I get penalized that three hours. They don't get that time and a half, even though they worked that time and a half, even though they got called out on that time and a half in the middle of the night to save our butts so that we can get up in the morning safely and drive the roads, they get penalized for that time. Now, I would like the personnel policy and employee manual to reflect that the non, non exactly. contractual people get that same benefit that the contractual people are getting. That's all I'm asking. And when we go above and beyond to try to um, enhance the quality of life for our employees and try to um, keep the employees, the good employees that we have, I think that we should at least um, take that one benefit that we know would be extremely appreciated down there at the highway department and that would be a, i'm sure a very welcome change in this policy no i'm not sure where you would put that in this policy as i read because i read through it briefly but i i know you would know where to put it but that that should be in here somewhere so instead of time and a half being anything over 40 it's anything over eight in one day <clears throat> That's what you say. If they're called in. Right. If they're called in. So right. for instance, if I understand you correctly, because I think this this did happen this year. Yeah. Um, so you've got a 40 hour work week and it's, and somebody um, had was planning to take Friday. Let's say they took Monday off for whatever reason, personal reason. So they were working 32 hours. But um, Thursday night, they get called in to work an additional four hours. Um, they wouldn't get that time and a half because they didn't hit their 40 hour uh, time. And what you're saying is that they should get it because they worked eight hours and they worked four hours and they, should, and they were called in to do it. Um, so they should get paid the time and a half. The same right. thing happens when there's a holiday during the week, mm -hmm. they get straight time until they're over 40, even if they're over holiday. Right. And it's it's not fair because we have another department that gets time and a half. And we have always maintained that uh, if somebody, even if um, the CBA changes a little bit, we try and we have always tried to maintain that PTO changes or something, um, if you know we change the carryover or whatever, we tr we have always maintained that we try to do that to the non-contractual uh, people, and we've done that consistently throughout my 15 years. So, but for some reason, this gets overstepped. This part in this this area, when you get paid time off, you've earned that. I, I've worked here, you know, they've worked here three years, so they get so much a month. They've worked here to earn that benefit. And, you know, when they work and they've earned it, it shouldn't be a time that you penalize them for it and take it away on the other end. So, and I, I really think that you ought to, we ought to um, have Jeannie, uh, 
put that back into the policy and write it in a way that they don't lose that time. Mr. Scanlon. Yeah, Pat, you know, I, I appreciate your, pas your passion, but I do not consider that we have ever penalized employees. Our policy didn't allow for before, but, and we should add it. I don't think we're penalizing anybody. I, I, it's kind of not the way I look at it, but I, no, I agree. If, if we call in somebody at two o'clock in the morning, um, on, other than their normal hours, to do snow plowing or, or whatever, even if they're on their vacation. You know, somehow we got to figure out formula for that, see how other towns are doing. Because I think other towns do that. They do pay them time and a half for when they get called in outside of their normal hours. I think that's a very important thing. I think so. And and um, when I was going through and reviewing our goals and all of those things, one of the things that we, we said in there was to be Premier, a premier municipal employer, um, and so this, to me, revisiting this and taking a look at it would would you know, continue to work toward that goal. Um, just acknowledging the fact that their time is just as valuable as the time from any other department. So I think it would, in terms of figuring out a formula and how to be able to do that, so that we acknowledge that, I think it would be a good idea. Mr. Pyro, just so I can process in my head, Tim, work with me here. So employee Joe works uh, is working a 32-hour week. It's January. He works a 32-hour week. He put in for PTO for Friday. So that would bring him up to 40 hours because he's taking eight hours of PTO on Friday. He's working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, eight hours a day. Boom, that's his 40-hour work week. Now, on Wednesday night, we get, you know, a uh, an ice storm that comes in and I have to come in for four hours to treat the roads. Under the current scenario, he now is getting paid for 36 hours and four hours of his PTO gets put back in the PTO bank. Or is he getting paid for 36 hours straight time plus eight hours? So there's really four hours he's actually getting double time. No, he's actually in in total he's receiving uh, wages of forty four regular hours. Forty four regular hours. Okay. Eight of which are paid. Now in Pat's scenario, same employee, same scenario, he would get thirty two hours of straight time, eight hours of PTO, plus four hours of time and a half. Correct. Okay. okay. Just want to make sure I understand. Wow, that's, that, that's what you were saying, Pat, right? <laughs> well, I just is that, is that what you're yeah, saying. I just want to make sure. Right. I, yeah, that's I got it. Clear I'm trying to take it out of my my private sector brain, and I got to put it in my public right. sector brain. So. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it um, it's like why should I come in? Right. Right. It should be acknowledged. It really should. Yeah, why should I come in at two o'clock in the morning, plow snow? <clears> so. That's the gig, and they understand that's the gig when they take the job. That's why they make pretty fair money in the scheme of things. I don't think we've ever cheated anybody out yeah. any time that they work. Think but what we're talking about now is if you're called in the plow, you get time and a half. You get time and a half to come in the plow. If it's, if it's going over your regular. Well, if you, you I think total of hours. That's yeah. the problem. That's yes. the problem. Is because if you got eight hours paid time off, then you have a picture for it. You haven't actually right. worked 40 hours. And that's what our policy says. Yes. You get your paid time off, Lord knows, but you don't get to count that as time for But in the other world, up the road, on the other side of town, they do get it. They could take eight hours of paid time off, but they still get that holiday pay, and they still get that time and a half. You know, all the years I've looked at that contract, this is the first time I'm coming to grips with that. They they have always yeah. got it. They have always got it for years. Well, like I said, this is the first time I've known that they get time and a half, even though they haven't worked 40 hours. Mr. Pyro. 
So in, in, it almost sounds like we have to say, okay, uh, uh, the DOT worker, their hour, their normal hours are 6 a.m. to say 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. if they work 10 hour days, whatever. If you are called into work after this time and on holidays or normal days, you know, or weekends, you are going to get time and a half. Straight, it doesn't matter how many. Uh, well, I was just gonna say that uh, years ago <clears throat> when uh, Joyce was here, uh, we had worked up uh, some sample language. I think you can find that again. That dealt with this this situation specifically because that did come up uh, well, that was years ago. But um, I do remember there being some drafts, so I'm sure we could bust that out and take a look at it again and uh, send that. Because there are a lot of situational. Situations any, any way of working out what that would have cost us? Oh, absolutely. Right. Because uh, uh, there's I, examples of that very thing in our sample records, correct? Yeah, no, I, I, can, uh, I can go back and calculate uh, over the course of, say, last year or this year. Uh, it's, uh, I can tell you it's not a significant amount. No, I'm sure it's not, but it's something we haven't budgeted for either. That's correct. But we could also say effective. I mean, if we haven't budgeted for, we could also say effective such and such a date too. I mean, we could always do that. That would be an issue, but um, by the same token, we could you work it out on what it's costing us with the with um, contractual people? Can you give that a shot? Okay. So, um, I just wanted to go through a couple things that I came across. Page 10 of 38, it talks about the board shall establish and appoint a town human rights officer. And I don't believe that that is accurate. And just so I've looked at four or five different other communities. Uh, employee manuals, and it appears that somebody provided a template uh, to all the communities because a lot of language I find in here, I find in other manuals, so I'm guessing that's what happened. Um, I think this is an error. I think it should say the town um, human resources officer. So unless anyone has any objection, I'm going to change that. Yes, yes. All right, on page 12 of 38, this was an interesting one. Elected slash appointed officials. Elected officials are those who are elected at town meeting and or are appointed by an authorized town officer or by the board of selectmen. Position descriptions for the elected positions will be posted, noting what the board of selectmen and the town's expectations are as to whether the position is full-time, part-time, salaried, or hourly, in addition to any benefits or other items specified to the elected office, not otherwise covered by this manual or governing RSA. So does that refer, because this is before me, so does that refer to just the clerk, the town clerk tax collector, is that referring to the elected officials, the board? Is that the trust, it, uh, San, San, Sandy Hislop? Um, is she treasurer? Yeah. treasurer? I, I'm not, and I don't think I've run across this language in other employee manuals, so I, I just didn't know what the purpose of that was. Well, there was a, uh, okay, once sure. or twice that we had to appoint selectmen 12. But I guess my, my point is, is what they're talking about is that they, the position should be posted, um, noting um, what the town's are, expectations are, you know, full-time, part-time benefits that I don't, I guess I don't understand why you post that anywhere in town hall. It just seems odd to me. When we looked for 
posting the position that was available for selectmen. We asked for it to be posted and they were submitting their, but we didn't ask, uh, we didn't specific ex expectations as to whether the position is full-time, part-time, salaried or hourly or whatever. Um, there wasn't any of that. And that's the only thing I could think of that that was what that was. We asked them, it was posted and then they had to submit um, a letter as to what, why they wanted to be a select, and then they were interviewed. Um, so it was a cattle call because I was at it. Right. I we think, all sat around the table and gave our. I think there was more than once because when normally resigned once and then came back. And um, would it be a, a disclosure to them that because although you're you no know, employee, you're elected, you are yeah. eligible for certain benefits and that you have to make that known? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know. That's what I was trying to find out if there was any institutional knowledge on this. And if, if there's not, I'm going to check on this to see. I'll ask, uh, That's the only thing I can think of. Um, what that? Genie. Why we would need and that? I, I don't think there's. Um, we wouldn't have um, the, the town clerk in the employee manual anyway. Right. Um, well, the, the thing is, is we do pay in it because it's payroll, so we make aware of what benefits are available and what the expectations are. But not to an elected official, and she would be the only elected, elected official. So you, as if you're running for selectman, you are eligible. You will get a certain amount of compensation right, from the town. You will get eligibility for <coughs> certain. Uh, you can buy into the health insurance, things like that, and even the things that you don't have. Sometimes it's important to say that you don't get anything, and to have it, you know, posted as such, so that. There's no assumption on uh, and that's so I'm just wondering if it's just like a housekeeping thing that you do because it could it's be, but have we have a, I don't think we've ever posted a disclosure right. or a yeah. disclaimer or yeah. a yeah. job description as to what yeah. this is what this is saying is this is a job description right. on what a selectman is all about and this is what job yeah. job description of of, of a elected official and it's going to be posted. It just seemed odd mm -hmm. to me. Mr. Dressman. I said a, the, the last part of this is about uh, benefits uh, possession is full time, part time, salary or hourly, in addition to any benefits or other items specific to the elected position, not otherwise covered by the manual or governing RSA. It's we had a, a long time elected official who was afforded uh, health benefits, um, uh, vacation benefits, and that they wanted further on in here it says that if you work 20 years for the town until you are entitled to 20 days of your regular hourly pay as a bonus for having been here 20 years. 25 years, it's 25 days. Uh, so that person expected, because it says further on in the manual, that uh, <clears throat> these days were available, but those are available to hired employees, not. Uh, oh not elected employees. If if Catherine had won one more term, she'd have been a 20 year person. Would she have then been uh, eligible for 20 days worth of uh, selectman pay? I think realistically, it, it doesn't come up much, but it, it, there's gotta be something that says, these benefit, the benefit in this manual, it, Different if you're an elected official than if you are a if you're an appointed official. Mm 
uh, town administrator is appointed, the finance officer is appointed. Okay, that's one thing. But as an elected official, it should be spelled out that not all the benefits that are available to the other employees are available to right. me. I get no vacation dates. Right. So, so the question is, is why is anything about an elected official in an employee manual? Well, that's a darn fine question. Are you technically, <laughs> you know, if you're getting compensated, are you technically by Department of Labor well, an employee, well, or is it? You get I think that's it, it, yeah, it's interesting because you get when when I do all the reporting for whether it's Prime or Health Trust, uh, the board does get you know, in some instances, is considered um, an employee. We're so paid by the town. Well, you get a W-2, we're an employee. <laughs> but You're eligible under health insurance? Yeah. If we pay the full cost. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll check here. I'll check <laughs> on that. Um, on page 14, there was a section on over the time I think that Pat was talking about. And it's in the first paragraph, and it talks about um, the 40 hours in excess of work. Page what? Uh, page 14, 38. And it's the last sentence says paid time off, holidays, leaves, baptism, and other time off benefits are not counted as time work for purposes of overtime. And then the words were included that said, except when called in by the department head. So I don't know if that's what you were referring to, Tim. That you it's, it's that section. So that and so that that may be the solution um, that you're looking for is, is that right there, because that addresses the issue. And it leaves it to the discretion of the department head, except when called in by the department head. So they wouldn't get paid. Um, time and a half unless they were called in by the department and they would be called in by Kevin if they needed snow removal in an emergency, right? Right. Oh. But it's then what about, their, what about their uh, wouldn't work on the trash I, day, right? I, I can say to you that not all uh, management applied that in the same manner. Yeah. In the past, yeah. in that department. You see that? And that was right. Yeah. But this, but this, if I'm if if I'm reading this, this was a new. This was an additional change that has just not been incorporated into the manual. What I'm saying is that now it looks like that's how you attempted to address it. That's the that's the language that addresses. Is your this concern. how they're doing it now? Um, no, they should not. They no, no. because okay. um, it hasn't been approved by the board. This just triggers another question. Going back to what Pat mentioned earlier. So scenario uh, tonight: Mother Nature goes way off our meds. The temperatures drop to 20 degrees. 4 a.m. We have four inches of snow out on the road, and they have to go out and plow. Now that they get called in, they're going to get overtime, but is there a certain point that straight time kicks back in? Like, like if they would normally have been at work at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., mm -hmm. does, that, does that kick it back into regular time? Okay. Well, it's, the, the way it's been, the way we do it is uh, by the week. So it really depends on the week. But that's that's why I want to try to find that other um, that other language. You know, there was, I think, it's some other language that was kicking around for a while, but, um, but no, so uh, it would, and that's the way the department of labor looks at things. Do they look at 40 hour work week? Always have. So, so to answer your question, I don't think that would be the case, but. I guess it would depend. Let's just ask. On the next paragraph, there was written in blue the town does not recognize or offer compensatory time. What about the PD? So this may go back to what you were saying about the CBA. 
getting treated better because they get comp they get comp time. So, well, that was taken away for a long time. They were going nuts with comp time, and uh, there was no there was it wasn't being managed. Uh, so we did away with comp time, period, sure. and sure. that would be reflected time. by the blue line. Oh. There is no comp time. Okay. Historically, police departments have had comp, comp time. Historically, for a hundred years. Here too. In in agencies all yeah. around. Well, years ago they had paid time off holidays, sick time, and comp time, all kind of, oh, and swapping, mm -hmm. all kind of on the same level. Nobody knew what was what on the scheduling. And so you didn't know if it was comp time, or if it was holidays, if it was, and it was so convoluted. We said, stop, everything, stop, and that Tim developed the timesheet that we have today. And there's a drop down that says you comp time or pay time off or holiday or whatever. And then it was, we said we'd bring it back when we knew what everybody was taking mm -hmm. and that we knew that there was a swap. We didn't know if John swapped with Mary if Mary was actually swapping back with John at some point in time. Yeah, I remember, I remember that, but. And uh, yeah. so there was a huge um, comeback with the PELRB that said, hold on a minute now, you can't take away their comp time. We said, no, we're not. In the contract, it says that it is. Right. Um, at the discretion, at the discretion of, of yeah. the chief, right. and we took the discretion, the chief's discretion right. away, yeah. and that's how it worked. Yeah. And they couldn't deny that, but we said we would give it back when we felt right. comfortable, and we did. Right. But what, I guess what I'm getting to is the the note in here again before me, so I'm trying to understand. It's what the note says is mm -hmm. the PD gets comp time. Right. But the town doesn't get right. hourly workers, I'm guessing, because it wouldn't, right. it wouldn't apply to salary people. So right. that's the question. I don't know if that's something that. Um, I never understood why we couldn't give it to hourly people, but would we have the need? The question is, would we have the need for that? I mean, if you have, um, for instance, Leanne working on planning board and zoning, she works in the evening. Could you offer that as comp time or does she take it as overtime? Well, she wouldn't take it as overtime because she's a salaried employee. Oh, okay. So that's a bad example. Yeah. Okay. It so, would be like, it would only be Gail. It'd be any of the hourly workers. Gail or Becky or, all right. So would it be to our benefit if we offered comp time or would it make a difference? Well, I don't know. I guess that going back to what you said earlier, which is whatever the CBA is getting, right. do the town employees get mm -hmm. that it would apply to? So I don't know. It's just not, it's not, I'm not asking for decision. I'm just saying that's one of the things that I no, have. You've got a good point there because it's, um, but I know if think about it and think, um, while we're bringing this back for discussion, think about how many people would actually use it right. and take advantage of it. Would it be to our advantage to say, yeah, let's bring it because it's really not a bad, um, I mean, it's well, very controlled at the, at the um, PD it's, and it's very useful at the PD. And it, and it goes to one of the things that Tim and I will be I think working on it, bringing back to the board is this idea of, that Scott had mentioned earlier is about being a premium employer, premier employer, and what are the things that the town could do that might not necessarily cost money but would make you more attractive. 
there are there are communities, there are businesses I, I, I can think of, BAE, Teradyne, and others, who because of COVID now have people who work from home. You know, do we have a work from home policy? I don't know, I'm just saying that. Right. Eric, you sent me an article about um, Stop, Swamp Scott Mass. Swamp Scott Mass, where the municipality is allowing the employees to do four 10 hour days like our PD does. Do we do, you know, is that, is there a time of year when that would be appropriate? Maybe in the summer when it's slower. I don't know. But those are the things that will, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Something to consider. Right. Mr. Pyro, yeah. I just have another question. Top time. I earn 10 hours of comp time, but I get that back as 15 hours, if I'm correct, right? In the PD, yeah. Well, that should be in every case yeah. if you're going to do comp time, because it's yeah. usually in lieu of overtime. Yeah. But, well, even when we on pay a time and a half. Hold on a minute. You really, 10 hours of comp time doesn't equate to 15 hours. It does. So, yeah. So, 10 hours. You're converting one hour of overtime into one and a half hours of regular time. So it depends right. on what he's talking about with 10 hours. If that's 10 hours of overtime, that does convert into 15 hours of, uh, of comp time. Regular. But 15 hours of comp time is 15 hours of comp time. It's already been converted. Right. right. Well, you're earn, uh, you I, earn. I go I go volunteer at the senior center, and or I, you know, they say, you know, we're going to give you comp time for that. or that's a bad example. That's a bad example. Yeah. Volunteer oh. is volunteer. Just so you know, on on in payroll, uh, we do the conversion so that uh, that shows in the payroll book on the cover sheet yeah. how many hours of overtime that they that they work that they're asking for comp time. Yeah. The comp time sheet shows that converted number into the 1.5 times. Okay. Yeah, like, well, I have a, uh, I have a neighbor that works for another municipality, and you know when it comes time for winter, they get comp time. So he earns, you know, 20 hours of, he gets goes in for 20 hours extra. He gets, you know, extra extra vacation time because he takes it as vacation time. So. It it works. Um, the way it works at the PD, they can't, it can't cause, you can take it, but it can't cause overtime when you take it okay. in the contract. Okay, so it would probably have to work that way too. But if you think about <coughs> um, Gail or Becky having to work at, at the town meetings and the time, the extra time that they have to put in and stuff, if they work on a Saturday at town meeting, <laughs> And they took that as comp time. Generally, what people do is if they have a doctor's appointment or whatever, they use comp time instead of taking pay time off. And then they use their pay time off as vacation because they can take that anytime. All right. Um, the other item. Page 16 and 38, this has been uh, going back and forth with a lot of communities. Um, holidays, there's now a new federal holiday, if you've heard of it, Juneteenth. In 2022, it'll be June 20th. In 2023, it'll be uh, six on the 19th. So the meeting that... <laughs> The meeting that's the conversation that's been going back and forth and will serve up which communities are using it and which are not, which are making it a holiday. I would say probably the majority are not um, counting it as an, an additional holiday. But I wanted to bring it to your attention because it's a conversation out there. Um, something, to, something to think about if you want to think about that. Um, and I have a question. Yes. Uh, are there any other federal holidays that we don't observe? No, we observe all well, the other. There you go. But and this one just this is a brand new one. We don't observe. No. You 
you have to say no. I can't say no tonight. Just be aware of that. Oh, right. She gets to say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. So what? Yes, we don't and need it. And it's killing me on this one. <laughs> and it's killing me on this one. <laughs> so, okay. something to think about. Um, in section 418, page 26 of 38, there was, you'll see there's red line and blue line, and all that came out. I assume you have no um, changes or you want to keep that. Page 26. 26 of 38 on retirement. Uh, I wanted to say something on the page. Oh. 26, all right. Did you want to go back? No. Nope. Um, oh, you just said no. Yes. Oh, you do want to go back. Obviously, I can't say no. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to not go back? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> The other, actually, went over it. Uh, so there was the insurance buyout option. So it looks like that got changed. And you must have uh, voted on it because that's what it is now, right, Tim? It's 20, for a single person plan, it's 2250. Two person, 4500. Family plan, 7500. So, so if you're doing it now, you're not. You've already accepted that. So, when was that change made? In 2020? 2020. Oh, no, that's been certainly been at least five years. Okay. Mr. Jessman. I'd like to slide back to page 24 about the buyout contract, uh, canceling the buyout contract, the last few words in the paragraph. There's no provision for that. Yep, might make it necessary for canceling the buyback, buyout. But what does that look like? It doesn't say anything here about, oh, if we paid you, um, you know, $7,500 and all of a sudden you want to go in, uh, are you uh, going to have to pay it all back in a lump sum? How do they get it? You, you can. So it's uh, it's paid monthly, so that, uh, that they can the, cancel it and jump. Is a charity with their coverage. Mm -hmm. So if they're saving the town money on a monthly basis, they're getting their, their yeah. All right, of that. makes sense. Have we ever looked uh, recently at the other towns and what they're doing? But for a buyout? Uh, they're kind of all over the map. Um, I mean, some are more, some just a few that are less. Um, some don't even offer it. Uh, some have just a set amount, no matter which plan it is. It really, it's really all over the map. It seems somewhat generous, just the way it is. I was never in favor of this anyway. Well, it, it gets them to sit. I understand because, but to pay them to do nothing. Just like, yep, my wife has insurance. I'm going to be up my wife's insurance. And they're going to give me uh, 4500 bucks to do. Just, it irks me as a taxpayer, but I understand that it would cost us more than 4500 bucks to ensure that for yes and, and what happens yeah. is that in a lot of cases most employers offer something so that if if you're not competitive with other employers and the, the spouse's employer offers more then you know it's entirely possible to take the spouses mm -hmm. um, you know buy out and be on the town's yeah. cost, which in the, in the case of a two person, that's about a, an additional $16,000 cost. The family plan is uh, more 20, than that. Yeah, 21, 20, two. Not quite 20,000, but just right up from 20, 20. And so, uh, so anyway, that's kind of a, you know, I think 
win some, lose some. You wear some people that have been through that process. Based on those biases. So the other big item is a social media policy, which is on page 2838. And um, a lot of, I would say most of all the other towns, is they're updating, they're putting in a social media policy. So I put that in there for your consideration. Um, as a discussion point. And this is also have a draft social media policy, um, which I've got copies for you. You can take a look at that. Um, not expecting you to, you know, read it, prove it. You may not want it at all. That's fine. I'm just. That's There's one in each. Oh, some say draft the top one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, that's mine. And I get draft. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, seems like most of the other changes were clarification changes, grammatical changes. Man, what I was hoping is that the you could all take a, some time to look at this. If you have any other questions, you can either ask me or bring them back at the next meeting. And my, my hope would be that at the next meeting, we could approve the final manual. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm just <coughs> trying to um, move it along, but there is really no rush. The other thing that I'm working on, Tim and I are working on is a performance evaluation tool. I talked to you about that before. Um, and I had hoped to have that ready for you tonight to look at, it didn't work out. So I'm hoping I can get something to you by next week so that you have some time to look at it. We have at the, um, I think uh, Scott mentioned this before, a scheduled extra meeting of the board on the 30th of June so we could do the performance reviews. That hinges on whether or not we can get the, we can come to some conclusion on the performance evaluation tool. Again, if we don't, if we can't, if we don't, we just, <clears throat> we'll just move it back a week. If there's no hard deadline, I'm just trying to get the reviews done by the end of the month. And then you have um, Lieutenant Gilman coming in on the first meeting in July to go over his reviews of his folks, and um, then we will be done. Is that the date we do the final review for the lieutenant? Yes. Um, and Tim and I will also, I've asked him to help me work with me on a 360 tool for um, that the board has asked for. And, and Abe is aware of it, so we'll be working on that as well. And getting that out there before so that the response is coming before that, in that last check in with the lieutenant. So you're working on an evaluation, a different type of an evaluation. For town employees, right? Town employees. Because the PD has their own. Right. But they're using the same evaluation form that they've used in the past? Yes. They have? Yes. Um, if that's something that you want changed, um, I wouldn't suggest it for this year. No, not for this year. No. no. I agree. But they, it, it should be, they wanted to change it the last time, but shouldn't be right now. And the new chief should have input into that. Yes. yes. Yep. So does that sound like a plan? It does. Yes. 
um, any questions for me on the employee manual? Um, no, I I'll wait till the following weeks. I want to digest it a little bit more. I have um, some concerns on the social media part. Okay. And and I don't think the the employee handbook does not that does not need to be if we don't get it. If we don't agree on it on the 16th and approve, that's not going to hold up the evaluation. Just the performance evaluation tool that will hold up the, the performance reviews because we be using that in the new reviews. But again, if, if we don't come to, it just pushes off the reviews until. So it's not like you have to if you're not comfortable moving forward. Um, and my FYI's, we didn't know if you had any questions on that. I was, I was, I hope you got a chance to look back because I was pretty happy with uh, the Franklin Savings Bank application and the work that uh, we did on that. I mentioned to you in my um, report that Tim was critical in putting together the concept plan of the, the mobile web app. And I think that uh, worked out in Vince Paratori's you know, donating his design assistance. So I'm hopeful that that grant's going to be successful. And usually, according to the grant, it's three to four months and before we would hear back. but. So if, if all goes well, we should probably have that project done by, we've got a lot of projects that I'm trying to get done by the fall. Um, the lamppost, timetable, table, um, the app, but I think, I think it's all doable. Is there any more update on the um, cemetery? I do have, um, I do have a map. Um, Made copies. So I'll wait till we all get a copy of the map. So this is the map here, and the the boundary is this hard line here to here, and then it goes. This is the water's edge here. Mm -hmm. So you see the cemetery, according to this survey, is in the uh, in his property. I think I did mention to you before that Leanne had had a conversation with the gentleman who said if that if you wanted to take over the cemetery, he'd be open to deeding it over because it does appear to be in his. And I, I think that would be kind of consistent with what you said before, Pat, because didn't you say before the town they had offered to, to give it to the town and the town said no? That was years ago, according okay. to Catherine. Okay. And I wasn't aware that um, I, I he was even on the board at the time, but she said I was, and I don't remember it, but and I don't know why. But right now, there's, remember I had said to the board that you can see in proposed structure number one, how close it is to the cemetery. Well, in the corner of the cemetery, right here, in this corner, um, there's a huge genera gener generator that's right on top of the cemetery, sitting on top of the cemetery. There is absolutely no room between the house and the cemetery dividing it. They've left no um, 
um, spacing, if you would. So it's literally sitting on the cemetery. I just think that we have an opportunity to take over this cemetery. I think that it's important for us to preserve the history. And if they're willing to turn this over to us, I think it's really important that we do take that. Otherwise, it's going to be lost. And this is early 1800s. If anybody read the front page of the paper today in, in um, Laconia, and they're talking about early 1900s in their cemetery and how they're preserving it, trying to preserve it. And this is 1800s. I know the earliest I, settlers. I know when I drove by there, the brush and all that is like shoulder deep right now. Yeah. And everywhere else it's trimmed, but that is. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's, it's just, it's sort of like a, a second or third thumb. There's things piled in there. Yeah. We need to preserve our, these were the first settlers in Tilton. Well, some of the first settlers. Sandington Bridge is where people settled. Mr. Pyro. If the town took back the cemetery, is this property owner now going to have to incur the expense of removing that generator from the within from within the boundaries of the cemetery? Everything would have to come out from within the boundaries of the cemetery. And it's it's town property now. Well, right, and I I don't know, you know, negotiating with him if if, if he's willing to deed it over. If you, I, I have no idea if you said, well, you have to move this. You may say, well, I'm not going to deed it over then. I, I don't know if you if you put conditions on. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, I it's, it's yeah. if the if the obviously whoever's there is not RIP because there's a if the generator kicks on there's the vibration of the generator. But now, as as I say, I'm just it's a catch twenty two because the guy says, well, no. The word you can't say tonight for whatever reason, um, because it's going to cost them five thousand dollars to move the generator, rerun electrical lines, etc. Then what? Let me ask this: Somebody went and put the generator on top of your grandfather's grave, knowing that that's a cemetery there. Would you think that, uh, well, that's, that's okay, that's cool. Go ahead. I didn't personally know there was a cemetery there until about a month ago. Cemetery is a misnomer. I think there's two people buried there. I was talking with Tony. Before that land got sold, Tony was hooked into that new guy and wanted to know about the cemetery because there were two gravestones there. There were two actual markers. He said, well, you can't dig up a cemetery. So I know. talked to the, the town hall, but you can't dig up a cemetery. You can't build things on a cemetery. If you know there's a cemetery, there's room for that. And I remember something about us. us taking on the cemetery. I was against it then. I'm against it now. Um, I don't know is that we can honor the building. We can put up a marker. We can do lots of things. It doesn't involve getting a right of way because we have to have a right of way to get back there to mow it and whatever. And be getting the deed to the cemetery. And how much does that cost us? Is he just going to give it away? Maybe so, but there's legal expenses involved in that. And deed search and stuff like that. Um, this is not a place where people go to remember their loved ones. It just isn't. 
and I don't mean to be callous, but their, their direct relatives died out a hundred years ago or better. And uh, I don't know. I, I would be more in favor, I think, of putting up some kind of a dedication plaque to these people. Personally. Because wherever I'm buried, I don't really care what happens in 200 years. That might be you, but I'm, that's I'm, true. I'm just I saying it's. I wouldn't want somebody like, digging me up or, or my family members or uh, ancestors. So. I, I think it's a shame. It's an absolute shame that our town and our town fathers totally disregard history and what's in it and, and preserve it. You totally disregard well, history. Well, history, you just. Just this, you know, we're talking about this one little place and not total disregard for the history of Tilton. I mean, that's what you just did. Come on. No, I'm saying you're totally disregarding the history of this cemetery. Of this cemetery. It's yes, one of I the am. first cemeteries in Tilton. I get that. I get that. He was a. How, sure. how much history was, can you want of this? I mean, this is history. Do we need to take over every private cemetery? I'm not asking you to take over every private cemetery. Just this one. And um, I'm like, at this point, I'm a no. That's just me. I don't want to incur the expense. I understand your reason and I understand your point of view. I've lived with somebody that's been a member of the New Hampshire Gravestone Graveyard Association for years, more than 40 years, and I I listen to this atrocity every single day of how desecrated, and we're not doing anything about it. I listen to it every day, and every time we ride by there, I listen to it, and then we're not doing anything about it. But yet we can we can uh, try to preserve history around the rest of the town of Tilton, but we won't do anything about this. It's on private property. I don't think it's legal for somebody to dig up a grave or to build on top of a grave. You're right, and, and I don't think, and I think that's either. what the issue is um, that we're dealing with. And, uh, I mean, we have well, we haven't heard from other selectmen here, so. There must be rules and regulations concerning uh, cemeteries and graveyards. Mm -hmm. There are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what you can and can't do. And these people mm -hmm. that are doing something to the graveyard, uh, that's on them, and they're the ones that are subject to whatever penalties, if any. But uh, it's also on us as selectmen, too, and I'd like to hear from the other selectmen mm -hmm. on record on how they feel about it. Oh, well, there you go. Mr. Power, uh, I think it comes down to is the property owner going to be willing to move and incur the cost of moving the generator? If he's not willing to, he's probably not going to deed the property over to us. So I really think until we know that answer, can't say. Do we know if it's a permanent gen generator or one that was there for, for construction? Like is this, is I, it here's the whole thing. I'm I'm not saying that placing that on the cemetery is okay no matter what it is, but if it's if it was yeah. one that's there for construction, mm -hmm. you know, it's still yeah, if it can be used. Okay. And and to, to further what Pat said earlier, or someone said earlier, that the town the the town fathers said no one time. Now we're now the town fathers are being asked again, but they're now there's a, uh, a a roadblock, potential roadblock to the town acquiring the cemetery. Well, it wasn't in jeopardy back then. I was going to say prior, the buildings were much smaller and not invasive in terms of the space. Correct. There was one little cottage right there, right? There were two, there were two right. little. Were there two, way, two, way two, far two, away from it. There were much. 
the, the footprint of these is much larger. Yeah. yeah, John, sorry. Oh, sorry. I think we have to look back also on the records. Was it approved for them to put a generator on top on their site plan? Was it approved for them to be inches away and to disturb a brave site? Was it approved for them to remove the fencing and the markers that were around it and the pound, um, boundaries? It would be a violation. It could have violated what their site plan was. And in that case, yeah. And who's going to follow up on that? Records should be available online. I think anybody can look them up. I mean, it's, it's probably where it lays. Is, uh, was it approved for that? If not, then in, you get their occupancy permit or whatever the complications are. It come from violation by uh, if it is, Mr. Pyro. I just just took note. This map in the lower right corner is labeled post development plan. I don't see a generator on their post development plan. So if it's not on the plan that was submitted to the town for approval then it can't be there because that was I imagine that this was the plan that was used to base approval and maybe uh, well, actually they probably didn't go before did they have to go before ZBA or, or um, planning they went before so it may not have been approved knowing that a generation a generation a generator would have been on their post development plan on that spot the yellow spot on this map So they made a note about a hazard tree in the cemetery to be removed, but there's no nothing about a generator. This is sheet two of two. So, <coughs> so I think it just we have to check and see if it's for the plans. Can't that they would have a, a big generator at the regular feature. So we really didn't get an answer from from Scott. We didn't get an answer from Eric. We're just going to push this out for a couple more weeks, and then I gave you an answer. Gonna get... I wanted to find out more information. Me too. I just want to see if, I, I, if, 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 if possible, would the owner be able to to look, or get permission to just go on the property to look. So. Maybe I didn't give the answer that you wanted, but I gave an answer. I'm requesting more information. I need more information. I don't think I don't. I didn't see that Jeannie was writing anything down, so I don't think that you were really requesting information. Eric. Can you please find out? if the owner is willing yeah. i yes i mean I this. how much of a priority is this because it takes time to do this and i have a lot of other things so it's just where is the priority well we're already into this about six or eight weeks into this now that we've started asking questions mm -hmm. certainly we've been on six to eight weeks It'll be another two weeks before we get come back again. That'll be at least another eight weeks that we're into it. That'll be eight weeks. And then we'll 
certainly have questions again, so then it'll be 10 weeks. We're fine with it. It's fine. I, I feel like um, I understand your passion on it. I understand it, I get it. But I feel like, I don't want to say this. You ask questions, I bring you back information. That's not. I asked for the deed. It's not. I've asked four yeah. weeks for the deed. I yeah. don't have a deed. Well, I was pretty sure that that was something that I gave to the board. No. I asked for last week, okay. two, night, well, or two weeks it, ago. And I'll we give don't, it. we have not, I've not seen it. And I'll give it to you. But, for but deed research is what but I asked for. I, yeah. <laughs> do, do you see the grants I'm working on? Do you see <laughs> I mean, I'm, it, it's just. All a, right, then I won't. I won't, so I'll just come to meetings and keep my mouth shut no, and no, sign paper. But, but maybe, maybe that's something you, somebody else can well, do. I'll stay home and just do sign now payroll. I mean, the, I get phone calls almost weekly about this. And I feel stupid saying, all right, we're going to take it up at the, at the selectman's meeting. We're going to take, I'll take it up. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. And I'm so, the one that looks like a fool because right. I keep bringing it up. So I just need direction from the board. So this is what you want me to do. Everything else I'm working on. I'll just Daniel, tell the I'll just tell the people that are calling me to call them. I'm asking for direction from the board. Happy to if you want me to put everything else aside and spend all my time looking at this to get you the answers you need. Happy to do that. But other things I'm working on have deadlines too. Can we, I mean, I think we can look as selectmen and see, I think the uh, planning board stuff and decision and zoning board, as well as when they came before zoning board, it's all available, video online and that. We'll take a look at that. I have that stuff, zoning board already. On this? Mm hmm And that it was- I read it to you, approved. I read it to you six weeks ago, how they, said that they were moving away from the cemetery and they weren't they were moving towards the cemetery so, that's what they told the zoning board so we and it still went through oh got approved mm -hmm. or they did it i mean it's it's it two different approved. things it got approved it got approved are they violating their hardship was no they were not violating so they're not violating anything that they said they were moving on. away from it what they wrote on the paper the zoning board approved did the did the zoning board follow up and look at the plans and say they're moving away instead of closer i don't know so I you feel there's a violation of the zoning and that would just go to land use and i think they should i feel there was a definite miscommunication between the two of them and it got approved what happened between the two of them, I don't know. I can't say one or the other, but that you could read the you could read the notes on the hardship and why they wanted the hardship. And it very specifically says that they were moving the proposed structure number one away from it from the cemetery and proposed structure number two away from the cemetery, but in essence what they did is brought them closer. Okay. If the they, zoning board doesn't it, know that. Are, okay, so you, you're, what you're saying is that there appears as a violation and that as opposed to moving away, they move mm -hmm. closer. So I think that's something that land use or our bill inspector should investigate and, and, and do that. I, and I. But what are you going to do? Make them move the houses? Yeah. <laughs> If somebody goes and does a, a violation of something, they, see that's you, you. I get it, but I just I hear what you're saying. I just don't you know that is it's easier. But they to have bodies exhumed and put into the town cemetery or something. But you can't go. They have a, a um they went to zoning and they went to plan and they got a specific thing approved. However, they did something different. And because of that, there are certain things that happen that need to be corrected in some way, whether it's exhuming bodies and moving them to another place at their cost or what. But you can't just violate law and say, oh, well. But we don't know. 
Yeah, if it is a violation or if it was not. And that would I'm be. I'm okay. Just get me the deed. I'm fine. I know where my priorities are. I'm just saying, do it by the process. All the process that it should be. my done. request, man. Fine with it. I don't, I don't think it's right, but if, if, if they did everything that's 100% right that we told them to do. Sorry, I brought it up. Move on. Well, I'm not satisfied with moving on. I think it should go. Have the board take a look and see if everything. John, I'm not satisfied with moving on either. But we're not going to get anywhere. It's a lost cause. Let's let's just. Move That's on. your opinion. I get it. I would like to have zoning board take a look when they get a chance at the um, the process and see if there is a violation. And I'd like, to, I don't know if I have to make a motion or a consensus or other input on that, but I think. Well, this would be, on. this would be overturning a, a ZBA decision. And I believe that the window no, to not. do that. I'm saying have them look and see if it actually is a violation, not overturn. But they've already made a decision. Yeah. What was that decision? And did they, did the person violate it? I'm not saying change a decision. They made a decision before the houses were done. To making it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, John. You're asking me to make sure that they that they stuck to the parameters that they had set for the project. That were approved. Yes. Correct. Hmm. Yeah, it's not asking for an overturn. It's just making sure that the the parameters and the plan that was laid out was followed and that it was done the way they advertised, so to speak. In which case, if they didn't, then they have to come back in for a, an amendment. And it's a process to follow up. Anybody else agree, disagree, or? Right. I agree, John. Yeah, I think taking a look at it from the zoning side of it, just to make sure that what was planned and the, what was planned was followed. So that might come up again in the future if we just get a little report on what happened or did not happen. And then from there, figure out how we'll care for the cemetery, you know, if um, they want us to. Okay, who's going to do that? Um, well, I can send and uh, ask the zoning board if what I heard John say was ask the zoning board to look at it and assure that what was in the plan was followed. That's what well, you want. They can't go out there and be the land use that would be in charge of it. Or whether right, it's in the building inspector, I guess. Or... But you asked the zoning board. so. Land use has all those copies, yeah. all the files, yeah. and all the prints. Right. The zoning board people are at home, and they don't do that. They don't have all. No, I understand. So look, the review zoning... the records and yeah. do an inspection. But does the request need to come from us or the zoning board? Huh? Does the request need to come from us or from the zoning board, or are we requesting? I the think zoning you board are request? because I think they okay. think everything's fine, or else they would be looking at this. Okay. Specifically asking about the hardship in the moving the structures closer to the cemetery. Any violations of the boundaries or the terms involving the cemetery and houses? Well, that's specifically what I'm pointing out. Um, these are all the deeds. I will scan them and send them to you, John. Thank you. All set, Jane. I have nothing. Any new business? Mr. Jessamine. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Hearing none, those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 aye.